no homework tonight. You obviously have different stuff going on. That's exciting. Um, so we're going to we're going to work on problem 2A in class. You'll do 2B tomorrow, so don't do it as homework. Um, let's mark up the journal first. Notice it's J1 for journal page 1. I would just circle or highlight that. Yep. And remember, you're doing five steps when you journal. You're going to date. Debit plus amount, credit plus amount, explain. Did they give you room for explanations? Okay. Okay, and then then we're going to go post, but then you'll come back and do your reference column. With what? What goes in that reference column? The what number? The reference number or the account number, they're all listed in there, okay? Or, again, if I had to compare this to laundry, we're going to do our laundry daily instead of save it for the weekend. So it's going to be a lot of page flipping, but that's okay. It's just then when you're done, you're done. Uh, let's go to the ledgers next. I have to apologize because mine are really fuzzy. My answer key is really fuzzy, and I, it, it is what it is. Okay, so cash is an asset. It's got a debit plus a credit minus. AR is an asset with a debit plus a credit minus. Now, the debit plus means that's the normal balance side. Opposite of the normal balance is a subtraction. So an asset increasing is a debit. An asset decreasing is a credit. The reverse is true for liabilities and equity. If you get this, then you get accounting, okay? So you're you're good there. Supplies are an asset, plus minus. Accounts payable is a liability. We are leaving the left side, coming over to the right side. So the right is the plus. Right in the accounting terms is credit. Uh, what's below that? Ooh, we have a new account. How dare they? Again, going back to what we talked about, um, this is going to be harder than the test. Okay, You are going to learn that unearned service revenue is a liability. Do you want me to talk about what it is now or when we're doing the transaction? Okay, unearned service revenue. Well, we know what service revenue is. If you cut someone's hair, you're providing a service. Okay. Well, if you have an unearned service revenue, that means we owe someone something. So I'll use an example that I'm actually working on right now in my life. Okay. Um, during a MEA break, I have a fall sale. Junk by Johnny fall sale. Okay. Well, tomorrow I'm going to go pay for an ad to run in the newspaper for two weeks. So I'm going to go pay them, but have they earned their revenue yet? No, they haven't ran my ad. So it's, un it's an unearned service revenue, meaning they have to do the work yet, and it's a liability for them although I've prepaid them. And it can all be flip-flopped if it's, you know, someone paying us. So it's like the liability typically is when you owe someone. Well, here it's prepaid likely, or we'll read the transaction a little bit more. Um, but it's owing work for someone that has prepaid for something. So the liability piece is that we haven't done the work yet. Actually, I'm running a two by three ad because Sun Tribune is more now Stevens County Times. Um, to run a two by three ad for two weeks is only 60 bucks, 30 bucks a week. It used to be I paid like about 90 or $100 for it, but it went into more publications. So there you go. Owner's Capital, OE. Service revenue, OE. 
when we get into the expenses, um, they're plus debit minus credit. And then I believe they're on the back side as well. Are there three expenses on the back side? Mine must all be on one page, and I'm not going to sit and. Okay, yes. Oh, you're just stretching. Okay. So we are going to start journalizing. It's going to be a little bit of a page flopping session here, and it's okay. Um, I'm going to sit over here so I can use my scrolling feature a little bit better. You probably could do this all without me, but A sets I like to do with you. So let's go back. Bridget Tees is a licensed dentist. So what do you think her unearned service revenue is? Maybe a a customer's maybe prepaid their bill and she still has to do the dental work. That's likely what it's going to be, but we'll, we'll save that for when we do the transaction. During her first month of operations, of the operation of her business, the following events and transactions occurred. I'm going to throw you for a loop here. Some of them are events that are not journalized because if there's not money involved, there's not a transaction. So here we go with number one. April 1st, invested $20,000 in her business. Everything's dated for you already, correct? Okay. So if cash came into the business, is that the debit or the credit? Debit. So you'll have a debit to cash. Okay, so here we go. I know this is a debit. What does the other half of the transaction have to be? Credit, and what would we credit? Owner's capital, which luckily for us has a credit balance side anyway. We've done step one by dating. We've done step two and three by listing the debit, the credit, and their amounts. Step four, owner invests cash in business. Again, am I worried on how you explain it? No, for the first time, we're finally seeing my answer key have explanations, but don't feel like you have to write exactly what they have. The fifth step is what? We got to do the reference number, but we got to post to do that. So let's flip to the other page. We have a April 1st J1. $20,000 debit in cash. Again, your eyes are not wiggy. Your eyes are not tired. It's a fuzzy answer key. My apologies. Is there a balance so far? No, but zero plus that debit is $20,000. Is it annoying to be flopping around with pages? A little bit. Just lay them all out. Okay, what are we going to do with that 101? We're going to bring it back to the reference right in here. I am not going to run between my computer and my smart board. So you would literally just put 101 for there. Okay. Can you see where that would just be a point killer on the test if you forgot that step? Ouch. Okay, next you're going to find owner's capital. You're going to put in April 1st. Nothing's going to be explained right now. That's later in the book. J1. We had a debit for the other side. This has to be the credit. Zero was the balance plus what we just had as a credit with an updated balance of $20,000. i am going to stop and ask the question, why for debits was the plus, excuse me, why for cash was a debit a plus? Why for owner's capital is the credit the plus? Let me say that again. Why when we had cash debit it was a plus, and now I'm crediting and it's a plus. Let's hear it, Tate. Opposite sides of the big T. Very good. What are you going to do with 301? Okay, so I'm going to just put these in, but I don't want to sit and run around. So like this is 101, right? Was it 101? And then this is 301. So you're going to need numbers 
all the way down. Okay. Look at the second April first. Someone read what it says. Have we paid her yet? You guys, all we did was hire her. So there literally is no entry for that. Kind of, you would write no entry, not a transaction. Another one that would be an example of this one, interviewed a sec secretary receptionist. The tricky part there is they throw in what she is going to get paid. Um, but we just hired her. We haven't paid her yet. What would it be if we'd pay her? It would say like paid cash for monthly salaries. Yeah. Yes, the debit would have been the salary expense. In fact, I'll do a little shout out to Carrie. Hello, Carrie. <laughs> She did this yesterday and, and emailed me a few questions, and this was one of her questions. So I'm sure she's really watching it to make sure that she did everything correctly later today. So it was a great way for me to go, oh, yeah, the book does do that. So no transaction there. April 2nd, we paid office rent for the month. Okay, when we're paying something, is that a cash debit or credit? Credit. So, but what do we have to list first? We have to list the debit. So I want you to get that in your head, like, okay, cash is easy. That's a cash credit to know I'm hunting, hunting, hunting for the debit. What's it going to be? Rent expense. So the rent expense is the debit. The cash is the credit. We're going to do our laundry now instead of waiting till the end. I'm going to go find the rent expense. Ledger. April 2nd with no explanation. J1 is the page it's coming from. We had a debit of 1100 bucks. Added to it zero balance is $1,100. 729 is our number. And then you'd find the cash account. How are we doing with cash? Well, we have 20 grand sitting in there, but did we just use some of it? This is why the ledger exists, you guys. We get a snapshot of each account, whereas before we'd have to sit and wade through that journal to find where cash is impacted and do the math. It, here is, a, again, snapshot of this one. Bring 101 back, and we'll keep going. Next one. Purchased dental supplies on account from Smile Company, four grand. How did we pay for these supplies? On account. So is that a cash credit or an AP credit? AP. What's our debit? What did we get? The supplies went up. That asset went up. But so did what we owe went up. Going back to what Jenna just answered. No, Carly just answered. I want to be. I can't remember who. Or maybe it was Tate. Boy, I've got a short-term memory today. I see a debit go up, but I see a liability go up. How can you have two increases? Well, because they're on the different side of the T. Tate said it, that's right. Okay. To answer what that is, purchase supplies on account. I wouldn't add smile account. Later you'll have to, but that's for another chapter. Although it's annoying, let's go post right now. I'm going to go find supplies. It's going to go up by four grand. Do you think supplies ever goes down? When? When we use them. Eli's right, when we use them. I think that's the next chapter. 
it is. So next chapter, you'll learn about how we account for when we use things like supplies. So should I go put a cash credit in or an AP credit? AP credit. of $4,000. It's actually going up because we owe more. Bring your post-reference numbers back to your journal and we'll keep going. Am I going too fast or am I going at an okay pace? I know when I don't write, I tend to go faster. So if, if you guys say, Mars, put the brakes on here, you're going too fast. What's going on on the 10th? You perform dental services and build insurance companies $5,100. So we perform the service. Service revenue is the credit. We did the work. We took the tooth out. We whitened the tooth. We whatever. They did not pay, there was no cash involved, rather we build someone for it. In this case, we build an insurance company. Why is it an AR, not an AP? We own that work that we did in right to get paid. So as we post that, you'll see AR debited for $5,100. Is that an asset we like? We like all assets. It's an asset we love. <laughs> Not really, because there's a little bit of a loose cannon here with, are we really ever going to get paid from these people? Again, later in the book, we'll identify what are called uncollectibles. So what happens when people don't pay their bill? It's a mess. And then service revenue is credited. Do we see service revenue debited very often? No, we don't. Now we're to that next new transaction. I kind of like these ones. Terry, if you're listening, this is where you were maybe confused at home. On the 11th, we received $1,000 cash. Let's stop right there. We know what the debit is. Let's put it in. We got our debit in. We got cash. It was a cash advance from Heather Green for an implant. So let's talk about this poor Heather Green. She had a tooth implant that she may be booked out a couple months ahead of time. The question is, does she have the tooth implant yet or she only paid cash for it? She prepaid it, she paid cash. And why is the other half of this transaction a liability for the dentist office? They still have to do the implant or the tooth. So instead of it being AP, for the business, excuse me, yeah, AP for the business, or the business owes something, rather they owe the service to be performed. Just like, I still call it the Sun Tribune, but the Stevens County Times, I'm gonna prepay for an ad that I hope they run for the next two weeks because I've prepaid for it. Just like this, this Heather gal has paid $1,000 towards a fake tooth that she doesn't have in yet. The liability for the business comes from the service that needs to still be performed. So as we journalize, we need to go over and post. So $1,000 came in on the 11th, bringing our balance up. Do you like the little pluses and minuses that we draw? Do you think real accountants have pluses and minuses in their little ledgers? Maybe. 
So then go down to your liability section and update that liability that we owe to this person. I'm going to ask one more time, what's the liability of an unearned service revenue? We still owe what? A service to be performed. Very good. And then don't forget to update your numbers. AR is what? 126. And unearned service revenue was 112. No, I said it wrong. 112. Oh, it was cash. That's right. 101 and 209. So I hope you're doing that. I'm not doing it, but it's okay. All right, what's going on on the 20th? Okay, so unlike the Heather Green example, we had a dentist patient, James Chang. We did some work for James Chang. Let's just go with the cleaning, okay? And um, he paid us. So cash is our debit, service revenue is our credit. I'm gonna come back up here and write because I think it'd be a great time for you to add a few notes. So this is Heather the implant girl. The reason it's unearned is because she prepaid for her implant. This is James. Let's just go with, that's a very expensive cleaning, but we'll just go with the cleaning. And instead of prepaying, he paid at the time of the service. So do you guys see the difference? Going back to the 11th, I've heard horror stories from the bridal industry on the 11th. A bridal shop not too far from here. Like you could get in the car and drive, and I don't want to, especially on a recorded lecture, ostracize a bridal shop. But a bridal shop that I know of had brides prepay for their dresses and then locked the doors. So it was an unearned service revenue, or in that case, an unearned revenue because they were selling dresses and they went out of business and didn't tell all the brides that had prepaid for their stuff. Talk about a bridezilla. Well, they were financially struggling, but then just decided one day to lock the doors and say, we're done. We'll wash our hands of this. And there were brides that were impacted who just in like number 11, old Heather prepaid for her implant, old Heather might have prepaid for her wedding dress and didn't get it. You have to be careful about that. Like what kind of reputable or not so reputable business are you working with? Okay, let's go um, update everything. Can you see where errors can happen here? Like you, transpose your numbers wrong. That's the problem with page flipping. We have two transactions left. I see paid and I see paid. So that's cash what? Cash credit. So we're looking for the debits in both of these. Okay, remember back on April 1st, we hired a secretary. What's happening now on the 30th that actually constitutes a transaction? We are paying her. Salaries and wages expenses are debit. It's kind of like Jenna mentioned earlier, if this really would have been a payment like it is now, you'd see salaries and wages expense, and then you see cash go down. You know that's a cash credit, and you know expenses are naughty accounts that have debit balances, so it, it magically works. Go ahead and post then what just happened.
page flipping at its finest. We have one more transaction to do. On the 30th, we paid, again, I see a cash credit there, but what's our debit? To Smile Company for accounts payable due. So cash payable will be reduced because we used cash to pay. Here's the bigger question. Did we pay all of our bill? And you know, if you're looking at this giant journal that's chronologically listed but a bit messy, you maybe either remember what we owed or you rem you can look. But that's why we suck out of this journal and go post to tell the bigger story. Because there you can see that you only paid just over half of it. If months and months and months go by and we're not paying the rest of our bill, what do you think that AP is going to do to us? Knock, knock, knock on the door. Call, call, call. Ring, ring, ring. Or they'll start charging us. Starts with I. Interest. And what if we become one of their uncollectible accounts? So with a $20,000 investment in the business, this business owner has whittled it down to $16,008. we have had three amounts go out, three amounts go in. Cash is still pretty good. So we've journalized. We've <laughs> sucked out, posted to all of the individual ledgers. Remember, they're called journals and ledgers or general journals and general ledgers. What's our last phase of all of this? We need to take, and it might not hurt to grab your highlighter, and come in just Take and highlight all of your final balances. I'm going to stop there, but you could keep going. Just go and highlight all of your final balances. Okay, then we're going to take it another step. And I hope you don't highlight the wrong thing at this point, so be ready. I'm doing this to help you know how, where these things land on your trial balance. Go back to cash. Highlight the debit. AR, highlight the debit. Supplies, highlight the debit. AP, highlight the credit. So basically you're highlighting where the pluses are. What I just did is those are your normal balance sides. You know that from the whole plus thing, but I have, sitting in cash, a $16,800 debit balance. In AR, I have a $5,100 debit balance. Supplies, $4,000 debit balance. But in AP, I have a $1,600 credit balance. The whole purpose of the thing we're about to do is to make sure our debits equal our credits. And it's actually super easy. You're just taking those numbers and plopping them onto a formal, more formal financial statement. Okay, this is not fuzzy. Ooh, you can actually read that. So go grab all of those balances, debits or credits, and plunk them in the order is based on the ledger account numbers. Like it's in order of the ledger.
Notice as you get to the bottom the single and double ruling. One last thing I want you to do on here is just one last time mark what kind of um, classification they are. Out of um, OE, which one is missing that we typically see in drawing? Yep. I have a feeling for some of you today the light bulb went off. Like you're like, sweet, I get this. I get it. And it's the nature of the beast. When I'm teaching it, I like to teach just the thing we're, we're talking about. Like if I would have showed you the trial balance earlier in the week, you'd have been like, what? Okay. So trust the process because all of a sudden we get to this and you see the whole thing. Would you agree this was nice to see it all work together? Let's be honest. Would some of you have rather done all of your posting at the end? Okay. So tomorrow you are going to work through problem B by yourself or with each other. Sit at the background table, sit at the side counters. And if you want to try posting the other way, like doing laundry on weekends, go for it. You're going to yield the same results. It's just what kind of what kind of approach do you want to take? And I don't care. When I teach it, I tend to do this way so you can see the process work better. Cool. That's it, folks.